This is the best falafel place I've been to in Iran so far because because they um I wasn't going to film in the hotel this morning, but I just want to show you something quickly. Check this out. Look at the toilet. It's just chilling there, just waiting for a mate. What's going on? I'm just waiting for a mate. Is that why your car's all smashed up and you're up on the grass at the moment or what? We are in Bandar Bushari, a city along the Persian Gulf coast, which has a really interesting history. There's actually a, a, a thriving community of Afro-Iranians which is basically a product of slavery back in the 18th and 19th centuries. Many slaves were brought here from Africa and then when slavery was abolished in Iran in 1926, then they kind of continued their own lives here and now today many of the African music and arts and everything still remains as part of the culture. So they've got this interesting fusion between the Iranians and the Africans. Pretty interesting, you can see it in some of the people's faces. Today we're leaving Bandar Bushari and we're heading into a city called Abadan. So I have a buddy that's uh, driving me up there. We're gonna stop along the way and just have a really cool road trip day. Abadan, the city that we're going to, was actually one of the main areas of the Iran and the Iraq war. It sits right on the border of Iran and Iraq. So we're going to the border today. The war lasted from 1980 to 1988, so it was a very long war. Almost a million people were killed. It's uh, pretty brutal. Anyway, we're gonna get on the road and uh, head out that direction and learn more as we go. Beautiful day here. It's like, I think uh, 20 degrees or so. Blue sky children playing on the beach or more do you want let's do it we just stopped on the side of the road at this little kind of fruit and uh, nuts and seeds market uh, what is it Cheese pal. Cheese pal. Cheese, cheese, cheese. 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 Cheese palm. Palm. You know, palm tree. Palm, yeah. yeah. So these guys have just given me some palm tree, I think this is. Interesting. It tastes like kind of like watermelon and wood mixed together. So my driver just bought a bag of that palm tree and the interesting thing is is that he just paid by credit card but it's an internal Iranian credit card. You can't use international credit cards in Iran like I've mentioned and the ATMs won't work with your Visa or MasterCard or anything like that. This little stall on the side of the road has a little credit card machine you know with Wi-Fi connectivity and everything. It's uh it's pretty amazing and I've seen people using credit card in the strangest of places in Iran, you know. So these are the palm trees here and uh, I never knew that you could just eat palm tree. I think that's what it is anyway. Alright guys, so this is my driver Adar. Today we're road trip buddies, driving me 550 kilometers. Uh, but interesting fact, uh, Adar's brother actually lives in New Zealand, in Auckland, uh, which is the biggest city and he works in a, a supermarket there, so that's super cool. So anyway, on with the road trip.
oil tank there apparently. Uh, my driver Adar say, was saying that's what that is. It's huge. Uh, anyway, so we've stopped for petrol driving along the just open roads. Driving for about an hour and a half so far. And that lady there that you saw with the kid on the side of the road, Adar was telling me that she is from Pakistan and uh, that they have uh, quite a few uh, Pakistani people around these areas coming from harder times than Pakistan. And I think she was trying to hit hitchhike or begging for money, I'm not sure. And we're gonna continue on. We're going to another city that has this huge bazaar. All right guys, so we've just arrived in uh, a place called Bandar Ganave. If I'm pronouncing that right. This place has actually got a really interesting story behind it. So this is where a lot of foreign products come. Uh, I've come to this little bazaar market area. This is where a lot of foreign products come and they don't get taxed. So Iranians come from all over the country to uh, buy foreign products here. So I'm gonna walk around the bazaar and uh, have a look at this tax-free market kind of area. It's fascinating. Pretty amazing, there's just these little stands on the side of the road here, little shops, little shack kind of shops, and just hundreds, thousands of motorbikes lined up each side. And then there's that big mosque just uh, over my shoulder here. Big, beautiful mosque. And the singing as well, it just uh, comes together in this really authentic feeling package. What a place. endless it's just sprawled over so many streets like you can walk walk through these bazaars and they have just a hundred different like exits and entrances it's a huge maze they can seriously turn anywhere and it just goes and goes and goes it's like an endless huge bazaar it's uh, seriously something incredible you could spend hours walking around here and you would not see every shop you could spend days probably the falafel but this is the best falafel place I've been to in Iran so far because because they um, for one the guys are really funny and they love to make jokes and for two you get to like put your own toppings in so it's like being at Subway and then deciding your own toppings and so you can put in heaps and heaps of like vegetables of falafel yeah you can put in heaps of vegetables and like way more extras so I'll show you the setup now and uh, maybe the guys will crack some jokes Germany? New Zealand. New Zealand v Germany. No Germany. Germany, no Germany. New Zealand. Iran. New Zealand. Iran. 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 Iran, German. If you like the laughable, if you come to the south of Iran, you'll be in heaven. Every corner, get amazing falafel sandwiches. This one's spicy though. It's got a lot of chili in it, but it's good. I'm gonna go meet my friend Adar now. I'm gonna continue the trip. I actually met Adar through Mohammed that you saw in the last episode. My good friend Mohammed kept driving me up the coast uh, to Habadan. You can see I'm digesting that chili right now. So let's go meet him. 
and uh, continue this trip. So we've just come down to the uh, harbour here and uh, it's a pretty action-packed place. So a lot of these boats here, they head out to Dubai and uh, some are fishing boats and some are like cargo boats for goods for importing and things. You'll see some of these big blue boats. If you saw uh, a few episodes ago when I was on the island of Kishim, I actually went onto the building site of one of these boats. They were building these boats from scratch. It was seriously one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. Um, so if you want to know a bit more backstory behind these boats, then see that video if you haven't. Otherwise, have a look at some shots of these huge boats. So there's a fish bazaar here. We're gonna go have a look inside. That was a fascinating little market there. Anyway, we're gonna jump back in the car. Head north. Just stopped on the side of the road here. Been driving for another two hours maybe. So we've got another 150 kilometers until we arrive in Abadan. It's quite interesting. We've been going through a few checkpoints actually, military checkpoints. Obviously I can't film them because I don't want to end up in a, in a prison somewhere, but I've noticed all throughout Iran there's military checkpoints every so often. Obviously the security is quite tight and soon we'll be entering the region, the main region of the Iran-Iraq war from 1980 to 1988 like I was saying before. Adar is here in the background just setting up some coffee for us, having a little break. Thank you, man. Bye. All right, guys, so we actually arrived in Abadan, and uh, I dropped my bags off at the hotel, and I got another taxi down to the river where the border of Iran and Iraq is, and I'll show you it quickly in a second, but then I'm gonna like get out of here, and I'll tell you why. But let me just try and get a quick clip of across the river. It's a bit sketchy. Uh, I'll tell you in a second. Uh, I've kinda gotta get out of here. So that is Iraq over there. Just across that river, that's Iraq. Amazing. That behind me, in the very distance, in the horizon, not sure if you can see it, that's Iraq. I arrived here in Abadan said goodbye to Adar, he dropped me off at a hotel. I'll tell you uh, how much I paid him for the whole day, but firstly I'll tell you what happened just now. I arrived here and I wanted to get down to the river to have a look before sunset, and so I just had a quick look on maps. I found a location that looked like I could, you know, go to the side of the river. I got a taxi down to the 
to this mosque that I saw on Google Maps. It looked like, oh, if there's a mosque there, then it might have like a nice area by the river. We drive down to this area and it looks really sketchy. Barbed wire everywhere. And we arrive at this so-called mosque and it's like this completely closed down building. Doesn't even look like a mosque at all. Huge factories everywhere, everywhere. Extreme pollution and there's all these signs everywhere saying no photography, no photography. I look over in the distance and I can see Iraq. I start walking, like looking for a place that I could at least like not be on the side of like a super busy road so I could have kind of a place to, to, to talk because I have like some information I wanted to share I didn't want to share it in the hotel I wanted to share it at the river I walk around this corner like I'm holding my camera and set up in my hand it's not the most discreet thing in the world and there's like this little cutout behind a fence behind a big blockade with barbed wire all around it and it's just got this guy with a huge gun like just looking out of it back at me I'm like oh no like I've got a camera in my hand this is a bit sketchy I'm pushing you know the boundaries a bit here so I keep walking and um, when I filmed that clip I found like this little kind of a bit more you know discreet area I walk around get that clip like through the fence and I take a photo and then this army colored truck comes through and uh, I thought he saw me like taking a photo it didn't seem like a military area per se but there was military presence there and I was just trying to get a photo like through the fence of Iraq in the background after the truck comes I quickly dot across the road and like go into this big factory where everybody's finishing work it was a big gas oil plant I see this man leaning up against this car and I go up to him and I say taxi and he's like no 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 wait a second and he goes and asks another person that other person gives him a phone number and he calls a taxi for me orders the taxi for me incredibly nice guy and we get talking exchange where I'm from where he's from he spoke like pretty reasonable English and he said you know this is the boundary here right and I was like yeah yeah that's Iraq over there he's like yep and I was like and so were you here in the war have you lived here your whole life were you here when the war was because he looked um, I don't know maybe in his 50s and it was in 1980 to 1988 the war so he must have been here if he was living here and he's like yes uh, I was a soldier in the war and he shows me his leg and he's got this big kind of like indent out of his leg and he's like yeah that was from the war and uh, wow to bump into him just off the chance and to be right there that's something really profound part of this city here Abadan was actually sieged by Saddam Hussein's army in 1981 and they sieged part of the city for almost one year. Saddam Hussein was using chemical weapons as well and all this kind of brutal stuff. Anyway, to make it extremely brief, Iran won the war and they reclaimed this area of land and the Shat al Arab River is what separates Iraq and Iran today and that's the border where I was today. So the taxi shows up, um, a female taxi driver, and she drives me back to the hotel and <laughs> Wow, that was extreme adrenaline. Sometimes when you're in those situations, you're not sure like how volatile it is, if it's completely fine or if it's not okay whatsoever. And I was leaning towards the not okay whatsoever feeling. So that's why I kind of gapped it out there. So if you want to know how much I paid Adar, the driver today, he drove me all the way here and I could basically just, if I wanted to stop somewhere or go to any of the places like I did, the price was 4 million real, which is 30 US dollars, which is a bit more than I would normally spend on like a day trip for a driver or something like that but it just seemed like a, a cool way to to get where I wanted to go but also be able to stop on the way rather than like a bus which for one takes much much longer time and secondly you're kind of restrained and and I wouldn't really be able to make a cool video or experience the things that I got to experience like that huge bazaar and, and see the mosque and now he has to drive all the way back so like 30 US dollars is really a good price that is a large amount of money for a local he will be very happy with that I'm sure this area of Iran has got a much bigger Arab influence than the rest of Iran just because of its location and the history and everything tomorrow guys hitchhiking going to follow the border up going to this other city but I'll save that for tomorrow I'll see how I feel in the morning I might go exploring around Abadan but yeah guys that wraps up the video another great day in Iran today thank you for watching I hope you're enjoying these Iran videos please let me know your comments as per usual below in case I don't see you good afternoon good evening and good night thank you so much for watching